I was looking for an antenna to make for a satellite operation in the 70 cm band and I first thought about this kind of measuring tape. It is steel, so not too good, but I did not have one that I wanted to spoil. So I found other material. I found it in uh, sunscreen uh, stripes. So you have many of them behind each other and these are leftovers and they are from aluminium. So this looks fine. It is easy to cut with a normal scissor. You can, uh, they are flexible enough, maybe only for indoor use or portable use, so not for on the roof. As a boom, I had some uh, material left over. It uh, was it was some IKEA product in it, but it is a leftover. It is a very lightweight plastic. And as a dipole, I had a small piece of coarse cable with the BNC connector on it, and I took the insulation, the outer insulation of. Uh, the, the wanted length, so this is a quarter wavelength, and I put it sidewards, and this is the core with the insulation. So this forms a dipole. And to give it some mechanical support, I did a, a, a paint a stick on it. But it's, uh... So, we all mount it on the boom, uh, but first we need to simulate with uh, MANA, the program MANA, to see what, uh, what the possibility is for, the intention is, a 5 element Yagi antenna. So I looked at some other Yagis to get some information about possible dimensions. One of the things was that the uh, diameter uh, is of course, it is not a round uh, element, uh, but uh, they are flat. So I just uh, set it on uh, 5 mm as a radius. And these are the dimensions of, uh, of all the other elements. And I uh, center fed. Uh, number two, element number two, this can be seen here, and then we calculate. And this is the data of the calculation, and the far field plot look looks like this. Not too strange, rather normal. And when we look at the plots, we can see if we uh, when we make it a bandwidth some wider and then we can see if uh, it is a critical design or not it is now from 430 to 440 megahertz and you don't see much difference looking at the SWR it is about in the center of what we want to operate at The front to back ratio looks bad in this part, but it is only a few tenths of a dB and the gain also because we want to operate it in this uh, field of frequency. So that's this antenna and now I'm going to assemble it and uh, show you how it looks like. So this is how it looks like. I cut slits in the packaging material and slided the elements through it. It's uh, not losing. And the driven element, I 
connect it with some tape and it weighs almost nothing it's very lightweight very easy to hold in the hand while tracking uh, satellites let's measure it after connecting the return loss bridge to the NWT6000 and to the antenna this graph shows up I wobbled it from 420 to 460 and as you can see it is much too high in frequency so I need to lengthen the uh, driven element a bit to see what happens after lengthening the driven element I didn't see much difference in this dip so I made a larger span of the total frequency that I sweep and then I saw another dip here and I noticed when I changed the dimension of the driven element the resonance frequency of this dip changed so if I cut one instead of make it longer it shifts up and I can also influence this dip by adjusting the length of the individual elements when I make the individual elements some longer the dip shifts up into this direction so this shows the complexity of uh, such simple antenna we are talking about five elements Yagi so not <laughs> too large but that already introduced uh, several problems or challenges I will uh, now make these uh, two fit together and see what if we can uh, bring it to the wanted frequency after cutting two times the length of the driven element I started with this purple line then 5 mm less this orange line and again 5 mm less this red line you can also see that the dip here is less deep and this dip has to do with the director length if I make it a bit longer then it shifts also downwards now I lengthened the directors a bit as you can see there's a lot of difference in the red one that is the current actual one it has less dip here the dip moved away downwards and uh, they are falling together now so this is more or less the dip however it is all below minus 20 db so 25 db even so this is a large frequency span and we need to have it uh, somewhere around here so I will do some final adjustments but this shows that everything you do uh, influence uh, the resonance fre frequency of the total antenna and then we are not even talking about performance and these are still only a few elements and this is the final result and this is the final result related to the SWR or the return loss I'm now moving the antenna with my hand but it is uh, return loss is uh, between minus 25 and, and 40 35 and 40 so uh, good and the final result uh, is also that the dimensions of the reflector and directors are unchanged with respect to the original uh, intention and I only uh, changed the director the, the driven element uh, length so that's this and uh, next time maybe see how it performs in real world